All right, hello. Uh, I think everybody can hear me. I hope so. Um, my name is Martin Schweikhofer. I'm going to talk to you about uh, reproducibly building artifacts with embedded signatures. And uh, the first thing we're going to look at is a dependency graph. Uh, except I'm just kidding. That's kind of some visualization of dark matter. So it's not a huge dependency graph, but it could be, right? Um, this is a nicer dependency graph. But we heard a lot about dependency graphs already. It's just kind of where I'm also starting from. So uh, we have some outputs here and then like a set of arrows that go into one of those, um, like the boxes are the outputs and a set of arrows that goes into one such box is kind of a build step that produces that output. And um, that's conceptually where we're starting from. And we might have a, a signing step anywhere in our dependency graph, right? No matter if it's a huge one or a small one, there might be a signing step in there, and that's what I'm talking about. Um, so the first thing that doesn't really have to do with signatures is, but it's important, is that we have this nix build uh, rebuild command, which lets us uh, rerun individual build steps, but it's individual steps, right? So we're not producing the graph again, we're just rerunning the, uh, the last, the, the bottom node, right? Um, and there's also, there's a few issues with signatures specifically. Um, they might be anywhere in our output artifact embedded somewhere, right? Uh, they might be produced by any build steps. Actually, Nix is quite nice for reproducibility because we can um, kind of split up our build into different steps and then deal with reproducibility on an individual step level which makes things easier. Um, but with signatures, our signing step might not be deterministic. That's an issue um, with some signing schemes. Uh, but mostly it's, we probably don't have access to the key, right? So um, the, gr the reason why we're wanting to reproduce, reproduce an artifact is because we don't want to trust the person that's producing it. So we want to be able to do it on our own. And uh, with signatures, that's kind of incompatible, right? Um, and still, if we can't avoid having a signature somewhere, um, we can still manage that problem. And that's an improvement. And we can manage that problem by verifying the signatures. And this is something that we can model in Nix. Um, so the rough, rough idea is this. Uh, we have some unsigned thing that we want to sign. And we have a signing step that then produces some unverified artifact, and then we have an explicit verification step, and then that produces a verified artifact. And the key goes into the signing step, but it doesn't go into the verification step. Um, so one derivation for signing and one derivation for verification. And yeah, this means that um, if we can reproduce the verification step, uh, we don't have to uh, trust the signing step any longer. Um, and now let's look at what that can specifically look like in, in, in Nix, right? So uh, I have some Nix code here and it's uh, pretty unsurprising. It just takes the unsigned thing and then runs a command to sign it. Uh, this is probably gonna be impure in practice. Um, and then outputs the signed, uh, signed artifact. Uh, but this is not the full story because here we have uh, a first kind of weird thing, um, which is a load-bearing comment. So <laughs> uh, this comment is required to make substitution work correctly with what I'm constructing here. Um, we're putting the key fingerprint into the derivation here uh, so that substitution will actually only substitute things that have the correct uh, a signature with the correct key fingerprint. Um, and actually, if we were to want to properly do this, uh, we would want to verify uh, the signature here as well uh, so that we can't upload something that's signed with the wrong key by mistake. And then the second step, the verification, looks kind of similar. Uh, it just takes the input, verifies the signature, verifies that it's signed with the correct key that we're expecting, and uh, yeah. And if that's the case, then it just passes the output along. But here again, there's a caveat. We would also have to verify that the Einstein thing matches what we expect um, to really not have to trust the signing derivation anymore. 
Um, and there's a last thing that I did in here, which is this uh, environment variable that says verifies. That's kind of a bit of a magical thing. So it's metadata actually, and it makes the verifying derivation point to the signing derivation. Uh, and we can use that information in tools so that they can manage um, this additional information and let us know, oh, hey, um, this one derivation might not be reproducible, but there's some other derivation that exists that is reproducible and it verifies um, what the other one was doing. So it's kind of a, a better state because we can uh, track we can track and manage that part of our build process that is not reproducible. And uh, that's everything that I have. Thanks, everyone. Um, if you have questions, please ask them um, later on. <laughs> please say hello. Um, I'd be happy. I'm looking for collaborators on uh, this and other things uh, related to reproducibility. Thanks, everyone.